Okay, so uh, just to repeat the instructions, I need your focus because you're going to watch me on Zoom and then do on your browser. So to get you started, watch me first. We're going to go into Quests, and way down at the bottom corner where the science standards are, many of you have already been there, we're going to work on your box. And I couldn't think of a better name. Um, plus, it was perfect for what it's all about. So today, we're going to experiment with this chemical reaction. So I don't know if you know, but uh, vinegar is also known as acetic acid. One molecule of vinegar, which means the smallest piece of vinegar you can get, is made of two carbons, four hydrogens, and two oxygens bonded together in what scientists call a molecule. Baking soda is also known as sodium bicarbonate. And you can see what the molecule looks like there. That's the smallest piece of baking soda. And that's made of a sodium atom, one hydrogen atom, and one carbon with three oxygens, also known as a carbonate. And if you remember ocean acidification, carbonates are very important for shellfish to form their shells because that's how they get calcium, through calcium carbonate. Well, as some of you got to practice yesterday, when you mix this acid with this bicarbonate, it, it reacts. It's called a chemical reaction. And what you get, the gas you're creating, is carbon dioxide. I know, we're adding extra carbon dioxide into the air. I know that's bad. We spent weeks learning about climate change and ocean acidification, and here we are putting more CO2 into the air. But look at the bright side. It's, it's very small amounts, and it's for science, right? I know. Forgive me, but we're doing it. Uh, also, in that chemical reaction, you end up with some water. But that doesn't mean you can drink it, because mixed in with the water is sodium acetate, which has a sodium uh, atom, two carbons, three hydrogens, and two oxygens. Uh, yeah, don't eat that. <laughs> it's not food. But that shows you what you get in your test tube when all the reaction stops. That means when it stops making carbon dioxide. So for the assignment, I'm going to open my inquiry board. So I'm going to give you a few seconds now to go to this quest, go to the your box assignment, go to assignment, and open up your inquiry board. I'll give you a few seconds to do that. All right, so now it's the watch part. So that, that's going to be the routine. You're going to watch me, and then you're going to do. Uh, so right now, we're all on the brainstorm inquiry board. These inquiry boards are separated by topics, and you're going to learn what each one represents. So our brainstorm phase we're going to figure out what kind of variables we're dealing with in this experiment. Here's what you know. You know that you've got a test tube and a balloon to put vinegar into the test tube to react with the baking soda. So the first question is, what are some things we could change or vary? These are known as manipulated variables, which in math you learned are called independent variables. In science, the independent variable is the thing we decide to change in the experiment. <clears throat> so I'll start with one that I mentioned yesterday. One thing we could change or vary is how much baking soda we put in the test tube. Somebody unmute and tell me what's another thing we could change or vary? How much we put in the Absolutely. So I'm going to put first one, amount of baking soda in test tube, and the second is amount of vinegar in balloon. And in science, if we make things uh, uh, numeric or quantify them, it's so much easier to measure and compare. Uh, but a lot of times in science, you can't, and you just have to use your observation skills and record everything you see. But scientists don't only use their sense of sight, they also use their sense of smell, 
their hearing, their touch, uh, let's see, sight, touch, hearing, smell. Am I missing something? Seems like there should be one more. All their senses. So we got those two things we could change. What else can we change? Could we change how we put the vinegar into the baking soda? Yeah. We could change that. We could change how we deliver the vinegar to the baking soda. I mean, we don't have to use test tubes and a balloon. It's just a great way to capture the gas. So let's let's leave that at that. Um, let's move down to the second box. Things I could measure or observe. So in math, you're learning that that's your dependent variable. That's dependent on your independent variable. Well, in science, we call that responding because it tells us what we measure or observe. So what can we measure or observe? I mean, what 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 did you see in the video? The baking soda and the vinegar. Yes. I'm also adding another one, the circumference of the balloon. But I'll add what you just said because you can totally observe that. The reaction of the baking soda and vinegar. Yeah. What else? Is there another way we could figure out how much carbon dioxide gets in that balloon? How big the balloon gets. Ooh, yeah, I'm gonna write that down. How big the balloon gets. That's totally measurable. We just gotta come up with a way to measure it. <laughs> Getting baking soda all over my laptop. What else could we measure or observe? Did you notice bubbles yesterday in the test tube? Mr. Jean, you can measure how long, like measure in time of how long it took for the balloon to get to the certain um, the circumference of the gas. Fabulous. How long it takes balloon to fill up with I'm just going to put CO2 because we know what gas it is. Yeah, so we could measure how long it takes for the vinegar and baking soda to fully react. Because in the video, I think when I measured it, there was still some reaction going on. And what I didn't do, which you can decide to do in your experiment, is, you know, shake it a little bit to make sure every little bit of baking soda uh, reacts with every bit of vinegar. That's a fantastic one. So let's let's start with this list. This is a fantastic list. You can add to this list later because remember, today we're all going to plan the same experiment and we're all going to do the same experiment. Now, tell me, why in science is it a good idea for a group of people to all do the very same experiment? Because you may get mixed results. So let me ask you this. Let's go with that idea. If we all do the same experiment and we get different results, um, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Good thing. You think? No, it's a bad thing. Yeah. In science, yeah. So let me give you an example. Let's say I came up with an experiment to make a battery last longer. And it worked when I did it. And then I shared my experiment with somebody else, but when they did it, it didn't work. This is how scientists prove uh, what other scientists discover. In science, if you've discovered something, some other scientist has to prove that you are right. It's called peer review. So in science, we can't just say, oh, I discovered this. Um, everybody believe me and make me rich. No, it has to be peer reviewed. It has to be tested. And in order for you to test my experiment, I have to tell you exactly how I did it. And if you get the same results, you know, I did it right. So this is one of those examples. But the next assignment after this one, you all get to design your own. You get to change your own variables. 
So I'm gonna, if you haven't written what I wrote on your inquiry board, I'll give you a few seconds to do that now. So you're going to go back and forth from your inquiry board to what you see on Zoom so you can record this information. And yeah, if you need to say something, just unmute and talk because when I'm over there, I can't see you. Is kind of like testing logic in a way? Yeah, it's, it's kind of mathematical like that. Logic is a mathematical uh, principle. And it reminds me of geometry, where you have to prove if this and this happen, then the third thing has to happen. And experimentation works like that. We try to prove one thing causes another. So then I guess you would word it scientific logic, testing scientific logic also. I like that. I more can, of a, yeah. yeah, we can word it that way. There, I hope this helps. I've decided to make it bigger. I didn't know if you guys could actually read my tiny writing. All right, so we've got one, two, three things we could change, which means we've got three choices for manipulated variables, and we've got one, two, three, four things we could measure, and those are four ideas for dependent or responding variables. That told Mr. Brennan we were going to learn the other way to say independent and dependent. <clears throat> All right, moving along. The second inquiry board is where we choose which variables we're going to experiment with. So look at the important word here. For change, we have to pick one variable to change. Because if we change more than one, how do we know what led to our responding variable? You don't. And that's when science gets messy, when you have multiple variables. So that's why some experiments you keep everything else one way so you only change one thing so the question is of these variables which one should we pick i think we should pick between uh the first or the second because that's going to be easiest so do you all want to change the amount of baking soda or the amount of vinegar vinegar all right I'm hearing two votes for vinegar. Uh, vinegar. Vinegar wins. All right, so where it says, I will change, we're going to write amount of vinegar. That's going to be our manipulated variable. And then measure and observe. For this one, um, let's measure the circumference of the balloon like I showed in the video. Is that okay? All right, thank you. So we're going to measure the circumference of the balloon. And then when you all design your own, you can choose different variables. But what's the important thing? How many can you choose? Just one, one. of each. Yeah. That makes the experiment easy to conduct. Okay? Guess what? Everything else has to be kept the same. These are what are known as controlled variables. So the amount of baking soda has to be the same in every test tube. Yes. Otherwise, if we change the amount of vinegar and the amount of baking soda, we don't know which one had more of an effect. And we could experiment to see if one has more of an effect than the other. What else do we have to keep the same? Oh, how we deliver the vinegar we have to keep the same. So we have to do it with the balloon every time. How we deliver the vineg vinegar? No, vinegar to the baking soda. So when you use the inquiry boards, everything else you did on the first inquiry board, besides the two variables you chose, goes in the controlled variable box. So you can go ahead and type those on there now. A reaction, well, that we're not in control of. How big the balloon gets? Okay, we're not going to measure that. How long it takes? We're not going to measure that. Oh, so I don't even think we have to write those. The reaction, how big the balloon gets, how long it takes to fill the balloon. 
We're just not going to measure them. Whoa, so that's it. This is it. All right, let's make sure everybody has choosing variable correct. So we're all doing the same thing. I will change amount of vinegar. I will measure the circumference of the balloon. I will keep the same, the amount of baking soda, and how we deliver the vinegar to the baking soda. Now, for those of you who are super detailed, I'm going to give you some more things to control. We're going to use the same types of balloon because you don't want to change your balloon type. We're going to use the same size test tubes because you don't want to change that. So those are controlled variables. So I'm going to put type. And yeah, in science, when you do a controlled experiment, you want to keep everything the same. You want to control. So if you're a control freak, this is for you. Type and size of balloon. Um, same test tube types and size. Yeah, because we don't want that to affect the outcome. All right. I'll give you a second to make sure everybody has both pages of their inquiry boards complete. All right, so if everybody can look at my screen. Ah! I dropped my test tube. Oh dear, I hope I didn't crack it. All right, luckily it's plastic and not glass. Whew. Okay, so in science, the question is your problem. This is the problem we're trying to solve. Now, in real life, we usually start with the problem. We're like, oh, we have this problem. Let's design an experiment to solve it. Uh, I kind of gave you the problem, which is really, how does baking soda and vinegar, what, what happens when, when they react? Now, what you have here is two choices of phrasing your question. In a controlled experiment, you want your question to include your manipulated variable and your responding variable. So what I do is I take these two and I try to make a sentence question with either this first one or this second one. Let's see which one sounds better. And, and you might have to change your, the words around to make it make sense. So the first question sounds like this. What is the effect of the amount of vinegar on the circumference of a balloon? That doesn't make sense, does it? So I need to add more detail to that. What is the effect of the amount of vinegar on the circumference of a balloon when the vinegar reacts with baking soda? That's one way. Let's look at the other one. The other choice is, how does the amount of vinegar affect the circumference of a balloon when mixed with baking soda? What do you think? I like it too. So I'm going to go down here and I'm going to write that down. How does the amount of vinegar... Ooh, I didn't know what I wanted to say. Um, affect the circumference of... I love it when it predicts what I'm going to write. Of a balloon when mixed with baking soda. Oh! Yes, that sounds like a great problem question. That's the question our experiment will answer. How does the amount of vinegar affect the circumference of a balloon when mixed with baking soda? I love it. All right, everybody write that down. All right, everybody ready to move on? Nope. All right, I'll give you a few more seconds. All right. So take a look at my screen. You've probably heard the word hypothesis once or twice in your life. Uh, another way you've learned is to predict what you think is going to happen. So we're going to make a prediction about what's going to happen when we change the amount of vinegar that we add to a certain amount of baking soda. Now, here's how the sentence is going to be put together. As the, and, and our manipulated variable, is the amount of vinegar. And we get to choose whether we're going to increase the amount of vinegar we add to the test tube or decrease. And then our responding variable is the circumference of the balloon. We're going to predict what's going to happen to it. 
Is it going to get bigger, get smaller, or stay the same? But then there's a key word there, because you must support your prediction with a scientific explanation. Why you think it's going to happen the way you think it's going to happen. So let me demonstrate. All right, watch me. I'm going to say, oh, and I want to get rid of that italics, as the amount of vinegar, and I'm going to use increases because I like to start with a little bit of vinegar, and then to the second test tube, add a little bit more, and then to the third test tube, a little bit more, so on and so forth. So I'm going to say as the amount of vinegar, my manipulated variable, increases the circumference of the balloon, I'm going to call it the balloon, not a balloon, um, will, ooh, okay, this is where it gets tricky. So I've got an amount of baking soda, and I'm going to add more and more vinegar. So I think the circumference will increase because as you mix more and more vinegar with and remember, the baking soda has to be the same amount every time with an amount of baking soda. More CO2 will be produced from the chemical reaction. Wow. That's how you write a hypothesis, my people. So take a moment, read mine, and, and make your own. After the word because, you can write what I wrote, or you can come up with your own explanation. And hey, if you don't like my prediction, make a different one. If you think the balloon's going to get smaller, say decreases. If you think it's going to stay the same every time, because it's more vinegar won't react anymore unless you change the amount of baking soda. Ah, how many of you thought of that one? You could choose that. So I'll give you a moment to write your um, hypothesis. That's going to take you a few minutes. I'll give you a couple of minutes. Mr. G. Yeah. The way you made this like this um, doc, the way that I had like all the fill in the blanks, it's, I swear, it feels like a Mad Libs. Yeah, well, it, it is. It works that way to make it easy for you to end up with the final sentence. And I'm writing the sentence under it because if you try to write in the lines, it's going to make your document look out of whack. It's going to get ugly. Is it possible you could copy and paste it in the chat and then we could copy and paste it? But I'm glad you asked that because that has to be said. The learning is in the doing, not in the copying, which is why I do not allow copying and pasting ever. And remember, the second time you do this, you're going to do all this same exact process on your own. So you get to come up with your own variables, you get to come up with your own question, your own hypothesis. We're just learning together. Okay, so even if you're not quite done, come back here and look because this part ooh, is quite, um, this is the part that takes students the longest. Uh, and it's very important to how scientists can share their experiments. And it's called the procedure. So in a procedure, you typically draw your experimental setup. And um, when we're doing this on, on Google Docs, it's real easy because instead of drawing, we could just go to insert image, search the web, and you can like look up test tube, test types, no test tubes and then you can insert a picture of some test tubes whatever looks most like yours oh yeah that one looks all right and that way you don't really have to uh draw it now if you were doing this on notebook in paper which is really easier to do drawings on paper i don't know about you but drawing on a computer gets really hard especially when you're using a trackpad or a mouse um then you would draw it yourself but well, we can just put a test tube, test tube holders, and list these materials. So I think you all have six test tubes. Um, you might have six balloons. Correct me if I'm wrong. 
let's see, vinegar, of course, baking soda, test tube holder. You have to list your materials because if I were a scientist who was going to try to copy your experiment to see if your results were true, if I could get the same results, I would need to know what materials you use so I don't use different materials. And oh my goodness, we would have to get detailed with the size of the test tube and all that, but we don't have to. And I'm going to put a 400 milliliter beaker, um, string. Let's see, what else do we have? We've got string, beaker, oh, a ruler. Got to have a ruler to measure your string. All right, so we got a ruler. And I think I got everything, did I? Balloon, string, ruler. Now that's the easy part, to put a drawing of your experiment. And for those of you who do like to draw on the computer, you do know you can insert a drawing and just do a new one. And you can go here to scribble and draw your own test tube holder. Oh yeah, that's a little difficult. Oh, that's ugly. See what I'm saying? It's hard to do this. How's that, huh? 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 <laughs> and then when you save and close, boom! There it is, right in your... Isn't this cool? I know. Google Docs are pretty cool. Okay, so I'll give you a moment to get uh, maybe a picture of test tubes, but put your materials down, and then we're going to come up with the step-by-step -step procedure, the hardest thing sixth graders have to do with inquiry boards. Give you a few seconds there. All right, let's move on to the procedure, my people, because this one is going to make people cry. Hopefully not. All right, so a procedure literally includes the step-by-step -step directions of how we're going to do this experiment. Um, and it has to be detailed, but not too detailed. Okay, so let me move this to here. Yes? I didn't get to write down my... Oh, well, you'll be able to catch that up once we're done with the procedure, but I want to make sure we know how to do this. So I'm going to use the um, numbered list because the nice thing about a numbered list is when I hit enter or return, it gives me the next number. So usually we start a procedure by writing something like gather all your materials. And since we listed the materials in our list of materials, it's right there. So it's really cool to start with that. Step two, I would say put the test tubes in the test tube holder. Now, do you remember that one of our controlled variables is... I will keep the same, the amount of baking soda. Remember that? We now have to decide how much baking soda we're going to put in here. And if you have a ruler, you could really just measure um, like a quarter of an inch or half an inch on the test tube of baking soda. Or if you have measuring spoons, you could put milliliters. But I don't know if you all have um, measuring spoons, but you might all have rulers. So I'm going to choose, ooh, should we do a quarter of an inch? I'll take that as a yes. Um, add a quarter inch of baking soda to each test tube. Oh, I'm going to say put all six test tubes in the test tube holder. And then you're going to add a quarter of inch of baking soda to each test tube. Okay, so we got test tubes set up. We've got baking soda in each test tube. 
Guess what's going to come next? We got to start putting vinegar in the balloons, am I right? Yeah, I saw my thumbs up. Um, so we got to figure out how much to start with. So you've got this beaker. And this beaker has milliliter and ounces. And the lowest amount of milliliters it has is, is 20. Because it's got 40 space. 80 space 120. So it looks like it's going up by 20s. It's really important to figure out uh, what those lines mean that don't have numbers. So I say we start with 20 milliliters of vinegar. Add 20 milliliters of vinegar to the first balloon. Okay. Notice how I'm doing this? I'm just writing step by step what I need to do for my experiment so that anybody who reads this can replicate my experiment and see if they get the same results I do. So do you remember what I did in the video after I added the vinegar to the balloon? I put the balloon on the test tube. So we need to write that in words. Put the balloon on the first test tube without letting the vinegar go into the test tube. Otherwise, you might lose some carbon dioxide. You don't want to lose the gas. How does that sound? Are you all still focused? This, this is requires a lot of focus. This is the hardest part, folks. Once we get past the procedure, uh, then you just follow your own procedure. But it's going to help you organize your experiment. So stay with me and watch what I do so you can do. Okay? So in the video, I put the balloon on the first test tube. Ooh, mine has some air in it. You might want to say, let all the... Well, we can't let the air out because there'll be vinegar. Um, so the next thing I did was I tipped the balloon up to put the vinegar into the test tube. Tip the balloon to put all the vinegar into the test tube. Wait until... All the vinegar and baking soda. Wait until all the vinegar and baking soda are done reacting. Using the string, measure the circumference of the balloon at its thickest point. That's important. We have to do it at the thickest part of the balloon every time to keep the measurements comparable. If you do it the same way every time, then your results are comparable. Still with me? All right, I'll take that as a yes, even though I can't tell because people aren't putting thumbs up. Okay, so we're on step eight. Use the string to measure the first the circumference. So, what should be my next step? Go ahead and unmute and share your ideas. Record how big your balloon got. Ooh, that sounds good. So we've used the string to measure the circumference at its thickest point. Record how big your balloon got in centimeters. All right, because we're going to use, any time we can use milliliters, we're going to use milliliters. Every time we can use centimeters, we're going to use centimeters. And yeah, I cheated on step number three. I used a quarter of an inch. Maybe I should change that. As a matter of fact, I think I will. 
let's say, ooh, how about, let me get my ruler. I'm going to say one and a half, 1.5 centimeters. Yeah, there we go. Now we're being totally metric because we have to. I know. Got to do it. All right, that was great. That's a good step number nine. What do we do for step number 10? Who's next? I would say probably go to the next balloon. All right, so I started with 20 milliliters of vinegar. I'm changing the amount of vinegar, right? Say yes. Yes. So I'm going to increase, because that, that was my prediction. As you increase the amount of vinegar, the circumference is going to increase. So now I'm going to go add 25 milliliters of vinegar to the next balloon. Do you see where I'm going with this, my people? This is brilliant. I'm telling you, these inquiry boards are amazing. But watch what I'm going to do for step 11. I'm, I'm not going to repeat everything one step at a time. There's a beautiful trick in, in procedures called repeat steps 5 through 9. Oh, I just saved myself having to write those all over again. Is that not awesome? I know. So now that I've repeated steps 5 through 9 with 25 milliliters, guess what step 12 is going to be? Follow nine through eleven. Or no, You're nine. close. Add more vinegar. Like I don't know necessarily what I'm at. Add more vinegar and repeat steps five through nine, and then repeat that, and then again, and then repeat five through nine, and then it's gonna go. Brilliant! Everywhere. Brilliant! That's brilliant. Yes. So watch this. Let Let's put that into words. Um, repeat steps 10 and 11 adding five more milliliters of vinegar to the balloon each time until you get through all your test tubes and balloons all your test tubes and balloons oh i just showed you how to write a complete procedure for this experiment in 12 steps so now comes the part where you're going to be looking at mine, looking at yours, and writing it down. And remember, the, the act of writing it is very important because that's when it's going to get into your brain. Do. So you just saw. Now it's time to do. So I'll give you a few minutes to do. Okay. So hopefully you got all 12 steps. And if you're not finished because you're like, I can't type that fast. What I can do, I know, I'm going to do something and hope that you'll type your own instead of copy and paste, but I will share this document so you can view it, so that you can read what I wrote and type it yourself, and hopefully you won't copy and paste and cheat yourself of getting it into your own brain, because copying and pasting doesn't put it into the brain. As a matter of fact, typing isn't as good for remembering as handwriting on paper. So yeah, taking notes, much better to write it on paper and draw pictures to go with it, like the sketch noting I taught you. That's the best way to learn. Now that we've got the procedure, we need to set up a table and a, ooh, how did that get there? That's ugly, doesn't belong there. Oh, I see how that, that got messed up. That should be outside. And the uh, graph. Now, to be honest, the graph and the table is much easier to do on paper uh, or on Google Sheets. On Google Docs, it's just not, it, it doesn't work very well. As you can see here, what I measured is totally in the wrong place. I don't even want it there. I think it belongs down here. Oh, no, my graph looks pretty good. Hey, Mr. Brennan's been checking you to check for tail. You have to. That's how you make a perfect graph every time. And here's what's cool. Your manipulated or independent variable, always the x. Always. In experiments and science, too. And what you measure, your responding variable, is always the y-axis. So this one's going to be better on paper. 
but check it out. I'm gonna get rid of this. I don't even know where what it, what bleh, what it belongs. All right, let's move this up. I want to fix my oh my table's all messed up. So my manipulated variable you might recall its amount of vinegar. Vinegar. All right, that's my manipulated variable. Um, and this is uh, where you can decide how many trials do you want to do. This is a kind of experiment where if you do more than one trial, you want to take an average of your results to see if they change. Because experiments are messy. They don't always come out perfectly. Sometimes you, like when I was pouring the vinegar into the balloon, be careful, I spilled some. It's like, oh, that's going to affect my results. So you might want to do two or three trials. That's how many columns you need in your data table. And then this one is going to be circumference of balloon. And I'm going to measure this in centimeters. And I'm going to measure this one in milliliters. Oh, we're so metric, aren't we? Ooh, why is this way down there? Something is in here. So yeah, we got some problem. Your table might look like mine. This is just ugly, which is why you might want to do it on paper. Huh? Yeah. Well, and we're starting with 20 milliliters. Then we're going to 25. Oh, I don't have to write milliliters because it's already on my right here. See how I wrote milliliters here? When you write it here, you just need to write numbers. You know, we're going to do this on a Google Sheet. So much better on a Google Sheet. Let's do that. Watch my magic. Watch my magic. All right. I'm going to open up a new tab. I'm going to go to sheets.google.com. And I'm going to start a blank sheet. And let's call this... Um, amount of vinegar because that's my manipulated variable all right so the amount of vinegar goes here in milliliters who actually i'm going to move it down here and i'm going to start with 20 always put numbers don't put numbers and letters 25, 30, 35, 40, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 45. There. That's how much vinegar we're going to end up on the last balloon. And then this one is going to be circumference of balloon in centimeters. Okay. And if you want to do multiple trials, oh yeah. We can do trial one, trial two. It'll be more fun that way if you do multiple trials. I know, right? And then you always have to average them out. Okay, we get the average of all of those. Let me show you a neat trick here. Watch this. If I highlight all these cells and I go up to, let's see, I think it's format, merge cells, merge all. Oh, look how beautiful this is. Watch this. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Oh my goodness. Now you just put your numbers in here when you collect your data. I know. And then guess what? When you make your graph, you just highlight this, click on the make graph, and you can make the chart. Not by hand. Google Sheets will do it for you. Yes. Give me a standing ovation. I know. All right. So that takes care of our data table. So I'm going to show my data table and go ahead, go to Google Sheets, make your own. All right. If I could pause you all and just have you come back to watch my screen. I want to kind of uh, uh, bring it all together what just happened, okay? Let me do a kind of overview review. Look at my screen, and here's what we did. I showed you how to use the brainstorming page of the inquiry boards to think of all the variables, 
all the things you could change, all the things you could measure. On the second inquiry board, we pick just one manipulated variable to change, one responding variable to measure. Everything else, we have to keep the same. That's called a controlled variables, ex a controlled experiment. We took these two Mad Libs and turned it into the question, how does the amount of vinegar affect the circumference of a balloon when mixed with baking soda? That's the problem we're going to solve. And you might have made a prediction similar to mine. Some of you changed it up. My prediction was, as the amount of vinegar increases, the circumference of the balloon will increase because as you mix more and more vinegar with an amount of baking soda, more CO2 will be produced from the chemical reaction. So you learn that a procedure includes a drawing of your experimental setup, a list of materials you used, and a step-by-step -step procedure. And then we used this inquiry board to design a perfect uh, data table to collect our data. So here's what happens next. You probably looked at the next one and you go, oh, we have to graph the results. That's where we pause, because between data table and graph results, what do you have to do? You have to actually do it. Yeah, you have to do the experiment. Thank you. So this is when you do the experiment. Now, that doesn't mean you have to do it today unless you want to start it after school um, because you're going to have, oh, you can even do it during lunch, but don't forget to eat so you're not hungry when you go to Miss Berg's. Um, but tomorrow, during this time, we will do in the experiment, and, and that's where I want you to take pictures, and I want to see what you're doing. Uh, hopefully we can have some of you, yeah, show with your camera, your Zoom. Tomorrow, during science, you get to run your experiment following this procedure. Remember, we're all doing the same experiment, and we're going to see if we all get the same results. So that's it. All you have to do to finish today is get this uh, data table done, and you'll be done with all the inquiry boards up until the data table. And just message me in Classcraft if you're missing anything, because I went too fast for you and you were like, I can't type that fast. So I know how many people need to see my copy. Message me on Classcraft. This is, this is going to be epic, folks. I'm really excited. I'm going to...